what measures are being taken to tackle this global problem. Joining me now is Al Fuertes. He's a professor of conflict resolution and human trafficking at George Mason University. He also works in Southeast Asia on issues related to human trafficking. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. You know, this is an issue that it's happening all over the world in almost every country. But when people hear this term, human trafficking, whether it's forced labor or sexual exploitation, why isn't there more anger? Why isn't there more indignation? Wow, I think that's a very good question. Um, one possible explanation to that is that um, in many countries, you know, it's the essence of human trafficking, for example, is kind of perceived as part of the norms. And that is really a big problem on how to educate and how to, to remind people that this is not the norm, you know? In some countries, for example, like sex trafficking, for example, and we have many countries around the world that thrive in sex industry. And so whenever you talk about sex trafficking, people just kind of look at it as, well, that's, that's really normal and it's, it's part of the daily routine, you know? And that is one. And the other, um, another explanation as well is the lack of political will on the part of, let's say, go government leaders you know, not just the absence of, not just the absence of um, comprehensive anti-human trafficking laws. Because a lot of countries, almost every country it seems, have they have some sort of legislation on human trafficking, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're enforced, right? That's another problem as well. So um, having having comprehensive anti-human trafficking laws is a different story to the reinforcement of that. And, but the fact is that many countries around the world, like 150 countries that are members of the United Nations, actually do not have comprehensive anti-human trafficking laws. And that is one of the major problems. And another is the reinforcement of these, you know, of these laws. And governments also need to really educate and train its law enforcers, you know, government leaders, even community leaders about the problem of human trafficking. I want to ask you about a UN report in 2014 uh, saying the number of convictions globally has remained low. Um, between 2010 and 2012, some 40% of countries reported less than 10 convictions per year. That's astounding That's when you look at the billions of dollars spent mm -hmm. on human trafficking. 10 convictions? This, yeah, that's, that's really sad. In fact, um, I just got a research grant from George Mason University to examine particularly the prosecution aspect of human trafficking in the Philippines. And one of my initial findings suggests that the um, number one problem is really on the enforcement and of these, of these um, existing anti-human trafficking laws. The Philippines, for example, has, has a lot of really strong you know, anti-human trafficking laws, but in terms of having the political will you know, to promulgate and enforce these laws, that's a different story. Is it because these countries feel like there are much bigger issues to put their time and resources to that enforce? That could be one, yeah. That could be one. And you speak about education um, and educating political leaders and law enforcement. What about education for these vulnerable populations? Would that make a difference? It does, it does. But, you know, um, when the problem, if we try to look at human trafficking from a bigger context, you know, I mean, it has a very strong economic and cultural component as well. So in most cases, no matter how, many, how much we try to educate, you know, uh, particularly our general population, but when poverty really demands, you know, to do something, many vulnerable populations would do whatever it takes just for them to get out of that cycle of poverty, you know? So and is this problem getting worse, or are you seeing any progress? Um, I would say yes and no. You know, um, there have been, there's an ongoing um, movement right now, or let's say education campaign, you know, of trying to spread awareness, um, not just among government leaders, community leaders, but really down to the grassroots level. You know, I know at George Mason University, for example, we have this student-led, student-initiated organization called Freedom Connection Against Human Trafficking, and we partner with different um, entities, not just within the campus, but also outside of the campus. You know, um, we also know that many countries are now becoming more aware of this and finding ways on how to really address this issue. A global issue that this well, is a global is issue. not it's, going anywhere. Yes, a multi-billion-dollar business industry and a transnational 
crime as well. Alfred, thank you so much yeah. for your time and perspective. We appreciate it.